everybody, this is the hardest thing to stand up and do. And I'm here, and I'm here representing Elisa's mother and Elisa Jordan, who I know you guys have heard the story, but she was a member in your community who's been a victim, well, we don't like to call them victims, so we're gonna call them survivors, because that's what they are, because they're warriors of police brutality and police violence. It's hard to stand up here when it hits your home because it's easy when it doesn't hit your home. It's easy to attend a rally and to shout and to scream and to share on Facebook, but the harder things like texting the 3822 number to, to demand legislation on, the, on July 7th, things like that, the things that nobody wants to sit and do, those things are harder to do when it doesn't hit your home. So, I'm gonna tell you guys a story, and I'm gonna warn you now, trigger warning, anybody who has PTSD or anything like that, is gonna hit home, because this is what it's like for us. This is what it's like for the families. This is what it's, truthfully, this is what it's like for you. You're just not aware of it, because you haven't seen it firsthand. When I got the call that Maurice was gone, two days before that, he had left my house, and I was looking for him and I needed to call the police to go find him. What do you do when the people you're supposed to call are the people that you're afraid of, and then the people that end up murdering your best friend, or the people that end up brutalizing your daughter, or the people that end up profiling your son and threatening his life, and he gets used to it just because he looks like me, just because he looks like you. He might have a little bit of a browner skin tone and just because of that, he's a target. That's what our life is like. There was a period of time when me and my brother were arguing, actually it was me and my father were arguing, and my brother was like, hey, you know what? Let's all go take a walk. And I told him, let's, let's go outside. And he was like, we can't. And I was like, what do you mean we can't? We gotta get out, it's hot right now. We can't, what do you mean we get, can't? Let's go. And he said, we can't. And I was like, David, what's wrong with you? And he said, Isaiah, we're black. That's what he said to me. That's, that's a real life story that happened about two and a half weeks ago. He said, Isaiah, we're black. And then my answer was immediately, damn, you're right. We can't go walk outside. Why? Because my street, the one that I would have took a walk on, looks like the same one Ahmaud Aubrey was walking on when he got shot. Imagine how real, like imagine walking down your block and you thinking somebody could either pick me up harass me, and if it goes any way bit the wrong way, if I enact on my rights that are, that are God-given and legally given in the Constitution, I may end up dead or brutalized or wounded for life, like Bobby Joe and Beacon, whose son is missing half his organs. Six shots like Maurice's. It's the hardest thing in the world to come home and get that call that you're not gonna see somebody come back. Don't let this time to just be for screaming. The time is way past for screaming. They were screaming in the 60s. They were screaming in the 1700s when it all started. 417 years now it is? 417 years? This has this, we're doing something wrong. You know what it is that we're doing? We're counting on a system that's doing it to us to change. You don't ask your abuser to stop abusing you. You tell them, stop abusing me, and then you make them, and then you get out of the situation and you do for self. You protect yourself. And I can say that because I know it, I know, I know domestic violence survivors. My sister was one. And the hardest thing to tell her to do was to get out of the situation. America, we're in a domestic violence situation. Our parent government that's supposed to be protecting us is brutalizing us, they're hanging us from trees, they're shooting us, they're raping us, they're, t they're torturing us, and they're doing it in broad daylight because they, we gave them the authority to do it, and we continue to empower them to do it because we don't do anything about it. I'm not saying you need to be violent, but you do need to protect yourself and unionize and stand together because guess what? A bully doesn't mess with a group of people. A bully messes with one person at a time. They find out one black man walking when I had the gun pointed at my face. Yes, it happened to me. I don't got nothing on my record. When it happened to me, I was walking home in the middle of the night. It was cold, started jogging. 
pulled over. Why is there a black man jogging? Do I deserve to have a gun pointed in my face to reach for my wallet that he asked me for? If they can take terrorists in peacefully, then they can sure as hell take me in peacefully, if they need to. We're treated with violence off the bat. And I'm gonna address something here, because I don't know if there's any police officers here, but if you're a good cop, as in you take your job and you're owed seriously, you have a job to do that we entrusted you to do, which is to take in your bad cops. And departments that govern these individuals when they bring the case to you, I'm gonna tell you right now, as sure as I am breathing, and as sure as these people are breathing, if you don't enact on your jurisdiction and your authority to hold them accountable, then you'll see us in your face at the police station protesting. You'll see us in these streets every day protesting. You'll see us in the legislation protesting, making our voices heard. You will get the bills, you will get defunded, you will get divested, and then you will get abolished. We gave you the job. It's a job. It's a responsibility. We got to clock in and do our job every time we go to work. God's telling me, hurry up. <laughs> I just want to tell you guys this. Don't be a bystander. Don't just be someone who protests. I thank you all for being out here. I love the fact that there's multiple colors and there's multiple creeds. It doesn't matter what you believe in. Everybody's human. You all have blood and it's all red. Unless you're an alien, and then the lizard people think it's real. But I'm, from what I can see, we're all human beings. We need to wrap this up, but we need you guys to take action. We need you guys to do real things. We need you guys to text that number. We need you guys to show up to the legislation meeting on July 7th. And we need you to actually research what your legislators are putting into action. You need to learn their platform before you just go vote. And please, Go vote! That's all I'm going to have to say. We need justice for Elisa Jordan. You're her community. Stand with her. Thank you.